Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning into another Super Tease video. And in today's video, I am going to be covering the most fun balanced druid build you can get in 10.2. Starfall is back. And if you are somebody who struggles with melee DPS, then this is going to be a great solution for you because this is the best case scenario for this build. In this lobby, we got a Ret Paladin, a Death Knight, and an Enhancement Shaman. The main name of the game here is to get our dots up on as many targets targets as possible, get our incarnation on cooldown, and start spamming out Starfall as much as possible. Use thorns when the melees connect onto you at the same time, and use your wild mushroom to get triple dots. You want to make sure that you're dotting up the healer and swapping damage to the healer as well with this build, especially against Resto Druid. So here, Anti-Magic Zone is protecting the Shaman and the Death Knight, so we loaded up a full row of dots on the Druid, and now we're just going to start retreating away from their defensive cooldowns. Use Typhoon, use Wild Charge, use Stampede as necessary to try and get away from their defensive cooldowns while still expending as much astral power as possible procking our star surges getting us more astral power to get more star falls to get us more proc star surges swapping our damage to the druid and just spreading our damage basically to anything in the match you can see we're pushing almost 200,000 dps albeit this is some pad damage onto the death knight's pets but a lot of this is also effective damage while charging away from the iron bark getting into position using our instant star fires when we're getting attacked bashing the ascendance of the enhancement shaman using our renewal on the ascendance of the enhancement shaman and then typhooning them away rooting them and getting back behind the pillar you want to make sure you're using your mass entanglement on melee dps when you're fighting healers that can't be solar beamed which is pretty much all of them except for evoker and holy paladin at this point if the priests are all playing gnome but now we've got some distance so we're going to load out our stellar flares that gets us our triple dots that gets us a huge engine for our astral power generation i see it's stun on the druid so i'm going to solar beam him out of the stun and keep dumping some damage onto him in the back line but now our shaman is stunned so i'm going to wild charge stampede it's a really good Good combo for just breaking snares uh, and then immediately sprinting yourself away from melee dps and we get an interrupt here with the death knight's pet so with that precognition we're going to cast a clone uninterrupted get one of the melee dps off us and swap to the druid in the back line forcing more hots to be swapped over wild mushroom on the druid to get triple dots although if you want to play it safe i would say using wild mushroom on the dps is going to be safer this is going to keep snares on them i've wild charged away our shaman is rooted we got distance and whenever you got distance you want to use stellar flare don't try spam casting stellar flare while the melee dps are in range of you wait until you get some distance away and then utilize that spell you basically want to be shoving nature's vigil on cooldown this is just going to amplify all of your damage into healing here both the melee are connecting so it's a great time to use thorns uh, pop a wild mushroom there as well trying to deter them from attacking me we've got fury of a loon i should be pressing this as soon as possible it's really important to get fury of a loon on cooldown as much as possible i would not recommend playing full moon in this build or this lobby with multiple melee dps you're pretty much never going to have time to cast it we use our dash there with our mass entanglement to escape from the melee that gets us some distance now that we got distance we can cast our stellar flares and get those triple dots rolling once again on the melee dps we get a proc incarnation which is one of the funnest points in the game because it just throws your opponents totally for a loop to like wait how does he have his incarnation again and it's because you're you've got another proc version of it i see the druid out in the open in the back line with no hots i'd rather attack him than a death knight or a shaman uh with more hots than that we'll typhoon the melee dps off of us with a wild mushroom try and get away static field pulls them off to the side we got a grounding totem down that we're going to snipe and you can see that they're pretty much falling apart at this point it's almost a triple kill with iron bark zone and ibf and still basically dying through that uh, as the enhancement shaman goes down in round one and we're doing massive amounts of damage i think we press clone like what once i think we press clone one time this this build is all about just running and keeping dots up the entire time and just doing as much damage as humanly possible to force the enemies uh into positions where they're running away from you so i really liked this build in these lobbies like this with melee dps i would not recommend this build if you're getting warlocks and shadow priests <clears throat> it is really not effective in those situations it's particularly uh, you know used in this case where it's multiple melee dps that are in the game and you can cleave them and you can get a ton of pressure and swap to the healer with this build uh, and it's super entertaining to do it and i know this is probably the most common lobby to get in solo shuffles so this strategy is likely going to be really effective for you especially if you're aiming to get 1600 to get your free tier piece of gear because you can get your two piece already in week one i got it on the first day it wasn't in this lobby it was shortly after um so this build's really good for doing that incarnation starfalls roll 
rolling triple dots with wild mushroom entire team is already rotting we'll dot the druid who's standing out of any magic zone toss a bash over onto him uh, and then just start cutting away with wild charge and trying to get some distance use typhoon knock the rep paladin off me use our star search procs get our bark skin out make ourselves durable with with thorns so we can kind of tank them in the front line and try and tank as much damage as possible now this situation with an enhancement shaman is maybe the only time where i don't think this build is as good because enhancement shaman basically has like no cleave damage at all Whereas Rep Paladins and Death Knights, they have a little bit of cleave damage that they can swap around a lot more easily. Uh, with an Enhancement Shaman, I probably should have been playing single target. But regardless, we get Divine Shield almost immediately in the opener. I see the Druid and Treefor in the back line trying to poke him and dot him while the Paladin is bubbled. But running at this time would be good. And the Wild Charge Stampede combo is just a really nice one to be able to get to safety. Our Shaman knocks the Rep Paladin away. We get grip back into the fight. We have a Typhoon, though. So we're going to get into position, wait for that Death Knight's Death's Advance to fall before we use Typhoon, knock him away, get a bit of distance with the Static Field. We got our Mass Entanglement available as well. Here you could toss Mass Entanglement. You can root beam a Rep Paladin sometimes to stop them from freedoming if you're really getting stressed out and taking a huge amount of damage. I am starting to cast more clones in this matchup. Death Knight, uh, Rep Paladin's going to be a bit more threatening. We got Thorns up at this point. I see the Druid coming in for crowd control, so I'm trying to clone him and stop him from using his clone, but it ultimately got me kicked um, and kind of put me in a tough spot. Fortunately, our Shaman grounded the clone, um, but you don't want to be getting interrupted when you see an enemy healer coming for CC because then you can't use Solar Beam to interrupt their CC. But now I root beam the Rep and I jump to the opposite side to try and prevent the freedom as long as possible, get a little bit of extra distance uh, away from them. We get Icebound, we get Iron Bark, it's a lot of cooldowns. We've put them in a really bad position, but we're also starting to fall behind, so we may need to get into bear form pretty soon. Furio's Balloon to recharge our Astro Power, going for clones. It doesn't really matter if you get kicked too much. You honestly just want to tank the kicks for your team and then go back to spamming Starfall or Stellar Flare once you've gotten through most of them. We get a clone under the Death Knight, that forces a Trinket, uh, and we're just pulling back away from the Druid, so the Druid has to constantly come off the pillar in order to heal his allies we get a typhoon knock here we got nature's vigil pop that immediately off cd just trying to give as much healing as possible now we can got the, get the dots on the druid after pulling them off the pillar Keep spamming those instant star fires and wild mushrooms to get triple dots on the melee. Keep procking those instant star surges, free star surges. And look at the pressure, man. We're so close to a kill right now. We static field right behind the pillar. I'm going to wild charge the opposite direction and get as much distance as possible. Mass entangle them on their way over and then cyclone them when I'm out of range of their interrupts. Get into Eclipse really quick here for free while there's no interrupts next to me. Get a stellar flare up and get ready for another round of spamming Starfall. Pull this Rep Paladin back behind the pillar away from the Druid. You can also move into the starting room. The starting room against Melee Cleaves almost on all arena maps is a decent position to go um, when you're a caster. We get an Incarnation proc and look at the devastation. Fury of Loon rolling across the Rep Paladin the Death Knight forces anti-magic zone. Our Incarn's coming up in 50 seconds. We're honestly looking like we're in a really good position our damage is pretty high we knock them out of the zone the pet's rotting down to dots i think the pet might even just accidentally die to dots at this point and now andy magic zone is over we got magic bop on the red we're focusing damage onto the death knight uh, as he's not immune to any at this point trying to get into eclipse as we can free cast in the back here and there's no interrupts next to us we knock him up in the air with starburst we get gripped into a spirit link and right here is where i think i made my mistake i should have just chased this resto druid with sprint you see how low he is right now i think i choose not to chase him and he's literally like five percent i really think i should have chased him at that instance because now we end up in a really tough spot i bash the red i knock them all away uh, and we're in a ton of trouble they got wings so i got to get into bear farm i got a frenzied regen i got to root beam the red deny him from using freedom try and get some distance try and get away from them because we're really running out of defensive cooldowns iron barks up in the red he's going to be a lot more tanky this is a much more stressful situation so i'm just going to pull away try and get back into the starting room position um, and i'm going to stampede and then bear form charge so if you're scared about shapeshifting out of bear and to use mobility you can use the bear charge to get some distance i go for a clone on the druid but i probably should have just kept running away from the death knight because getting gripped here ultimately i think gets me killed in this round if i had just been as far away as possible max range in the grip maybe i survive a little bit longer because all i needed to do was be in a decent spot to use my incarnation here and they would just be dead so this is what i'm saying when you see the cooldown for your incarnation coming off cooldown you want to be focusing on defense and avoidance and just don't die just play to not die um, and if you can do that then you're going to be in a phenomenal position now albeit uh the rounds with the enhancement shaman were going to be the hardest i think enhancement shaman isn't doing spectacularly on this patch it's probably honestly one of the worst specs and really kind of lobby dependent getting this lobby where you don't have any mortal wounds is kind of tough for the Enhanced Shaman, but I do think I could have adjusted my play at the end of this game to just be get away from the Death Knight, sit behind the pillar and heal myself, and wait for Incarn because they had nothing, right? I would have been able to win the game at that point. So monitoring the cooldown of your Incarnation uh, or your powerful cooldown effects and making sure that when you see them a couple seconds away focus on just staying alive to that point because you really need that extra damage to be able to overwhelm your opponents. Now in this round we've got the Death Knight, and this is actually a really fun comp with this build. Uh, Death Knights after the buffs do a lot of cleave damage, so we're going to get our double dots up on as many people as possible 
possible, toss out a Thorns on our Death Knight, who's positioned offensively, and start getting our Starfalls rolling, our Fury of a Loon in card immediately. Starfall, Star Surge Prox, we got Bash, we're going to trinket this right away. I ain't getting CC'd. I need to be getting as much pressure as possible. We get a grip into a triple blind. I could root beam the Druid and the Ret when they're all stacked up like this to try and prevent them. I see the static field. It's kind of pinning them together. It wouldn't be necessarily terrible to just drop a Solar Beam on top of everything uh, to stop them from healing and standing in this spot. So we drop a Bash and a Beam onto the Druid. That silences the Ret to stop him from using Sanctuary. He's trying to reposition out of the Solar Beam. Then we can Typhoon them all back and away after they've escaped the crowd control. And you really just want to be pumping out as much crowd control during this incarnation window as possible. And you can see the numbers starting to scale right now between the Death Knight and myself. We're doing monstrous amounts of damage. We got some distance there, so we got a Stellar Flare out. Spamming out these instant Starfires when you're getting attacked is really important to generating Astro Power, so you can keep the Starfalls rolling. You also want to be running into these little balls on the ground called Starburst on the PvP talent. This is going to be generating you Astro Power and an important component. I'm actually making a mistake by not running into that little asteroid belt next to the wall right there. There's like four stars against the wall, and I'm running into a spot that doesn't have any Starburst. So this positioning is honestly a mistake. I should have ran into that corner wall. We've got Thorns up. we got Wild Mushroom. Fury of Loons coming out. Generating Astro Power. Getting us our Star Falls. Getting us a proc Eclipse already after our first Incarnation proc uh, are on use. And this is going to be really terrifying for them to heal through. You can use Starfire because it's AoE through Grounding Totem. So if you can't find the Grounding Totem, you don't want to waste GCDs. You can actually just keep plowing Starfire onto your target. And it will go through Grounding Totem. Uh, and it will just keep maximizing your cleave as much as possible. Keep our Star Falls up. Keep getting distance. Pulling away. I see the Druid get gripped here in the middle. Uh, we're getting into Eclipse of those instant Starfires, lobbing some Star Surges on the Druid into that stun, because we don't really want to attack into Iron Bark. Honestly, Cycloning and Iron Bark isn't really a bad idea in this position, um, but I just wanted to focus on doing damage and see like what were the limitations of this build, how far could I really push it, I think, in this. But yeah, okay, we end up going for Bash to try and clone, but this is Ascendants from the Shaman, so this is very scary. We need to be in Bear Farm and running away, using Bark Skin. Respect the cooldowns, don't get overconfident against that cooldown in particular. Uh, the Ascendants procs of Shaman is very scary. We try and stop the clone from the Druid here, I think he fakes it, but we still buy enough time that our shaman can now stop it and look at their team man they're all 50 percent health they're all rotting down next time i get into an eclipse or a starfall rolling here it's pretty much going to be game over for them shaman gets a nice cap totem across the whole team to try and stagger the the death the inevitable demise of their team but it's really pretty much over man magic bop at 10 percent star falls up i'm about to get into eclipse fury of a loon is rolling paladin has to bubble they've used pretty much every defensive cooldown that they've got uh, at this point we're still just kind of wall charging around chilling bear form frenzied when they're all immune to damage because why not there's nothing else to do I can attack into either of those defensive cooldowns and then we'll get our star falls and our dots back up onto as many targets as we can after this I see the druid out in the open lob out a couple of dots onto him star falls up we got an incarnation proc man and I don't think there's any way they're going to be surviving this is why it's so important to generate astro power because every time you're spending astro power you get closer to proccing another incarnation that's just going to totally mow down your opponent so this build is spectacular in battlegrounds really good in these melee dps lobbies and if you've been struggling with it I would highly recommend it it's been my go-to in this instance but if you want another build check out my moonkin guide which i'll have linked here in a moment that will go over everything what you need to do to gear i just wanted to highlight this build on day one in my thoughts because i was leading into it kind of thing this is an experiment how good is it actually going to be and these are the situations that i think it's going to be great in uh, but other than that thank you for watching the video and i will see you in the next one